Hey everyone, I'm Erica Patinsky. My pronouns are she, her. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia. You're gonna hear a lot of y'all as we're talking today. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. I live here uh, with my wife, Jules, our two dogs, Walter and Ocho. Hopefully they won't make a guest appearance barking or anything like that. Uh, and our daughter, Lola, uh, who's currently in college in New York. Um, I'm so grateful to be here with y'all to talk to Michael, the mastermind behind this really cool business. I was hoping I was going to do a reveal, but look what happened this morning. Lola, our college aged daughter, got to it last night. So <laughs> I have nothing to do a reveal, um, but I did have a chance to talk to Michael before this and so excited to um, get the chance to talk with him. Um, I did want to mention y'all lots of things going on in our world today. Uh, so excited to be here with our community, with our folks, and um, just really celebrate us and uh, Michael. So Michael, yes. I'd love to hear about your business, how you got started, and uh, what makes you passionate about chocolate. Well, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Benner. My pronouns are he, him. I am uh, in uh, the Bay Area of California. I actually live in San Francisco. I have a brick and mortar store in Oakland, just across the bridge. So I get the best of both worlds in the Bay Area. It's great. Um, I live in San Francisco with my husband of, uh, gosh, we've been together for 18 years, Curtis, who's actually on his way home from Atlanta right now. So there you go. Um, uh, we live with our, our fur baby, Ash. Uh, if you hear any barking, hopefully Ash will be well, well behaved today. He, uh, he loves when I'm on Zoom. So uh, we uh, started our business in uh, 2015. Uh, after I had a career in restaurants for, gosh, many, many years, uh, I was a sommelier before I was a chocolatier. So I was very fortunate to go from wine to chocolate. Rough, rough life I've had so far, uh, as far as that. Um, things that make people happy. Uh, I love what I do. Um, I love making people happy. I love making people smile, whether it was through wine or giving them lots of chocolate and delicious things. Um, I, uh, the story goes how we started the business. As I mentioned, I was in the restaurant business. I had been a pastry chef many, many years ago, probably about 30 years ago. And around 2015, uh, I was walking down the street with my husband, Curtis, and I said to him, I said, you know, for some reason, I think in my next life, I want to do something with chocolate. I don't know where that came from. I watch a lot of cooking shows. It's probably something on television. And for Christmas, he got me what turned out to be some of the best books on confectionery. So I started reading and playing took an online class, which I thought was incredibly odd, learning how to cook uh, on the internet. Instead of having a French chef yelling over my shoulder, I'm doing everything wrong. Uh, it's great motivation and uh, I figured it out. Turned out I was pretty good. And many years later, here we are. That's amazing, Michael. Thank you. Um, I heard your passion. I heard wine sommelier. I didn't hear, I, would love to balance my books and do email marketing and like do all those sorts of things. So what do you love about running a business? Um, well, and then what inspires you to get up every day and like do the things that, that have sure. nothing to do with the passion of chocolate and those sorts of things? Right. Well, I think as a small business owner, you absolutely have to be passionate about what you do. I understand what my strengths are and that is uh, creating delicious things and working with uh, amazing flavors and creating beautiful and delicious things. Uh, the, uh, the benefit of working with uh, Intuit and MailChimp is that it makes my life so much easier because that's not where my strength lies. You know, my strength lies, like I said, I, I, I'm good at getting chocolate underneath my fingernails and getting colored cocoa butter all over my face. That's where my strength is. And um, that's what keeps me going uh, all the time, you know, working, um, with your own small business is a lot of work. Mine's a lot of physical work. I'm standing, you know, 13, 14 hours a day at times, you know, cranking out chocolate, got my tunes on in my headphones and, you know, just kind of doing my thing. Uh, it's a lot of work, but when you finally get a chance to work for yourself, it's, it's a labor of love. It's the, you know, the passion. I don't mind working those hours. And, and for me, it's very satisfying to create an incredibly beautiful product that people, uh, like I said, their eyes kind of light up. Uh, if everyone saw the um, image when we started, our, our pride collection is there. Um, 
some other things. You can definitely check out our website and all of our social. We got some some beautiful things that I, I love. Pride is our Pride is actually the month that we launched in 2017. We opened That's in awesome. 2015 and launched uh, in 2017 for Pride at a big Pride event. So it was great. Amazing, Michael. What's your um, What's your biggest pain point? You know that you. I love it that you have this passion, but as a small business, we know that, you know, there, there's weird things that come up shipping or supply chain or whatever it is. What are you struggling with right now? Well, we've definitely had supply chain issues uh, and I didn't realize that they would hit uh, us quite so hard uh, getting chocolate, which you would think, you know, I don't know. I, I would think that there's so much chocolate everywhere. Uh, I actually ordered yesterday about 200 pounds of chocolate because I wasn't able to get the chocolate that I use for gosh almost a month and luckily summer is a little kind of a quiet time for us all the chocolate holidays are over so supply chain has been an issue our packaging last holiday season was a big big problem so COVID has really affected things um I would say for a small business for me uh for us that um moving into a brick and mortar as of last uh October um just with growth kind of understanding um uh, cash flow and having um, kind of understanding the ebb and flow of that. Before COVID, our business model was uh, I was working out of a commercial kitchen and I would package everything and then we would do events on the weekends. We do chocolate festivals and salons and uh, wine events and makers fairs. And it was so things were a lot simpler. You know, getting a brick and mortar, I'm dealing with a lot more moving parts than I ever did. And so being able to organize things a little bit, like having all my invoices organized so I can get billing out properly and receive payments and um, do all my payroll, which I had never really had to deal with before. It's really kind of been a one man job uh, for a really long time. My husband does all the sales and marketing uh, and I would have yeah. gig workers help out, you know, pre COVID. Now we have uh, two employees. I've been very fortunate to get, uh, end up with an amazing production um, assistant and uh, I have a manager that runs the retail portion of our business. Yeah, that's awesome. And then those folks that are on your team, um, how are they using QuickBooks to to make things faster and easier and, uh, uh, you know, a little less? Yeah, invoicing definitely uh, really, really helps. Um, we're uh, just now actually kind of getting into hopefully some more inventory aspects of, of it. We've always been kind of pretty small. We've literally like quadrupled our business within the last nine months. So Congratulations. it's uh, kind of, we were, we were on an upward trend, then COVID happened and we're back on that trend again. We're very fortunate. We've had, you know, some press, we were in Forbes, we were in a couple of, you know, different um, uh, national things. We've won a couple of national awards and it kind of put us on the mark, you know, on the thing and we've been taken off and it's great. Amazing. Couldn't be more excited. Amazing. Now, I know you said Curtis does the marketing end, so I think that he's the one that's probably using MailChimp. Um, he absolutely is, yes. Yeah. Do you know um, how he's using it and how he it's impacting your customers? He loves it because uh, he has a full-time job uh, outside of the business. He does sales and marketing kind of on the side for the business. He's the the tech guy in the, in the house. So uh, he loves MailChimp for sending out email blasts and kind of keeping track of uh, connecting with our customers, which is um, previously when doing all events, um, that was our marketing. We had people directly in front of us. We got to tell our story. We got to share our enthusiasm of the flavors and what we were doing. So um, as things change and business evolved and where we are now, although we have people coming into our store, we had created a, a large um, kind of database of customers from all over the country. So to let them know how we're growing and what we're still doing and, and things, MailChimp really helps with that because he can, you know, send out a blast and the response that we get from that is amazing. It's it's very funny. And when we have a, a slow day, uh, Chris is like, we're having a sale today and puts it on sale <laughs> and then and it's MailChimp and everything, all, all these orders come in and it's great. So it's, uh, it's a um, really, really helpful tool for us. I love it. Yeah. And uh, just sidebar, I talked to some of our, our folks from the customer team in our customer success group, and, and they want to offer y'all the chance to join the premium office hours. So Curtis can come in and we can help him sort of think a little more strategically 
and uh, make it a little less frenetic for you whenever Curtis decides to put something on sale. <laughs> so. You would love it. I think we, I think we both joined that. I'm sure I could learn a lot there as well. I think it'd be great. That's Thank awesome. you so much. Well, awesome. cool. Well, thanks for that feedback. We're so excited that uh, you're able to use the product successfully, and you know, also know we're always here, and we've got our ears open for the things that aren't working. <laughs> so we always want to keep making it better. So sure. please, please let us know those things as well. Um, now we are here to celebrate Pride Month. Um, are, are, I'd love to hear, like, what are y'all doing for Pride? Well, we, as I said, you know, we launched at Pride. So this is kind of a special time of year for us. Uh, again, living in, in San Francisco in the Bay Area, uh, it's hard not to be, you know, and they, they, uh, June happens, then they line Market Street, which runs up and down San Francisco with rainbow flags. And you can't help but kind of get in the mood. And, you know, th thinking of the history of Pride and, and how far we've come and how far we still have to go and the inclusion uh, and how our community has grown so much is just amazing. Uh, I've been in San Francisco for 28 years and to see how things have changed and morphed and grown and the acceptance has just kind of gone out of control so we we love this time of year we do um uh generally a lot of pride events we'll do you know pop-ups at the uh lgbt center um and help kind of raise money for charity this is our time of year to give back we give back throughout the year a lot of um animal rescue causes and uh at-risk uh lgbt youth uh it's really important for us to be a part of the community and give back to the community that has supported us for so long and um, so we do what we can. So this year uh, we have our, our annual uh, pride collection, beautiful hand painted hearts. Uh, they're beautiful and shiny. And uh, if you can see the image, I don't know if you can, but when you look close, when you go to the website, uh, I use a, a kind of a glittery uh, color cocoa butter. So they look like little awesome. jewels. So it kind of takes, it's very festive to me. Um, six of our kind of classic flavors and a portion of all the proceeds for that are going to an organization here in San Francisco called Lyric. And uh, it is a group, uh, an organization that helps uh, youth, gay youth, you know, whether they're at risk or, and helps them deal with, with everything from coming out to their parents to dealing with HIV prevention to uh, identity um, assistance. Uh, I think it's really important to uh, invest and support our youth and also help educate um, the 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 youth that's coming up now about uh, our path and how long and how hard it has been to get to where we are and the people, the sacrifices that have been made. I think it's very, very important for for everyone to understand that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, to refill my empty box, I am going to get some of the pride collection and hide it for my whole family. If y'all <laughs> well, can... I'm glad you didn't get any, and I'm sad you didn't get any. It's <laughs> chocolate is is the thing you have to have a really good hiding place because people can smell it. Maybe I'll just buy two boxes, share one, and right. keep one. Maybe that, maybe that's the better plan. That that way, I always say get some for yourself and share some uh, with others. Yeah. I've got a couple examples here. I I don't have any of the pride collection; those are all at the store. But well, when you go to the site, you'll see we've got some fun. We do these beautiful. If you can see on the hair. Uh, these big tablets, they're just a large format, beautiful bar. This has 70% uh, with roasted cocoa nibs and pecans and sour cherries. My personal favorite is our bourbon pecan bar and bourbon caramel pecan. So it's a really creamy, rich, buttery caramel, a little bit of bourbon, maybe more than a little, uh, but it's absolutely delicious. Layered with a toasted pecan duja, which is kind of a fancy word for pecans, a little bit of caramelized white chocolate and sea salt. This will yeah. knock your socks off, absolutely. Where do you get your inspiration, Michael? Like these are not, this is not a Snickers bar, for it sure. It's not like, a Snickers bar. Uh, what, what are you doing? That's a, what are you, uh, yeah. you know, for me, I, I kind of go with a lot of classics. I always say I'm a pretty simple guy. I just like to fancify everything. So the inspiration, for instance, with the bourbon caramel pecan, this started as a bonbon and it's morphed into a bar. It kind of, it's, I don't know if you can tell, it kind of looks like a cigar. Uh, it's, it's a little kind of a half dome. Uh, and it just happened, the color that I was using, uh, it's just beautiful copper, again, with a little shimmer, because everything I do has a little shimmer. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as far as flavors, 
uh, my mom uh, is actually a big inspiration to me for a lot of my flavors from my childhood, things that we just had around that, you know, that my mom's not a big sweets person, but there's some things she really liked. She always liked um, uh, turtles, which is caramel with toasted pecans and chocolate. So as a chocolatier, now as a fancy chocolatier, like how do I take those flavors and turn it into something a little bit more elegant, a little bit more refined? So I was like, well, caramel is a good, good way to go. And how do you make caramel better? Add a little bourbon to it, of course. A pretty classic Southern combination. And it's not so much for the boozy aspect. Uh, although I've used, used spirits in my a lot of my chocolates, mm -hmm. I'm using them for the flavor aspects of it. I'm not trying to get anyone drunk or anything, you know, so you have to eat an awful lot of chocolate to, to, to get to that uh, state. But it's more about the flavor aspects. And this is where my being a sommelier comes in. Because um, okay. for me, it's about the balance and the nuances of, uh, for instance, bourbon in this case. Bourbon is aged in cask and it has this wonderful vanilla, smoky, toasty kind of note. That when people think of like bourbon, they smell it and they're like, oh, we know it's strong. But there's flavor notes that works so well with caramel. And of course with pecans, toasted pecans get that nuttiness and it just works so, so well with, with bourbon. And it's one of those things I've done, a, a, just did a Grand Monnier, a collection or a, a spirits collection with a local chocolate maker and working with different spirits. Uh, and it was really fun. It's, it's just cool. great. Yeah. And then from a, a business perspective, what inspires you? Like, are you looking at other companies that are doing chocolate or are you looking at cool marketing or what do you think a little about bit of everything wise? you know I spend an awful lot of time on social media which is mm -hmm. shocking right um it's actually it's funny the amount of time I spend on the, the amount of time I actually post things that's not my strength but seeing what other chocolatiers are doing and I take a lot of uh, inspiration from chefs Local chefs were very fortunate to be in the Bay Area. I worked with Michelin starred chefs for years and seeing some flavor combinations that they put together. Uh, they, you know, there are some chocolatiers that do a lot of those kind of grace, crazy combos, uh, which is great. And that's really fun. But I go with what I know and things that I think uh, kind of uh, appeal to people the same way they appeal to me. My peanut butter crunch is one of my most popular bonbons, peanut butter and chocolate is amazing for a reason. That salty sweet is great. When I do a caramelized passion fruit bonbon, one of our most popular, it's really bright, tart, tangy passion fruit and a dark chocolate ganache. It's it's amazing. So that was actually inspired by another chocolatier. So for uh, that was one of the first uh, chocolates, fancy chocolates I had. I had never had passion fruit with chocolate. People think of raspberry and, you know, orange and strawberry dipped chocolates. Passion fruit and chocolate is amazing. So that's yeah. such a great combo. So uh, inspiration everywhere. You know, I sometimes I'll look at colors and say, what is that like a, like a bright orange? I'm like, that is just so like eye catching. And then, you know, sometimes you see things that spark some memory and like, oh gosh, that reminded me of that one time when I was a kid and my mother-in-law, we were talking about this not too long ago. Uh, she loves candy corn. I love candy okay. corn. She's like, can you make a candy corn chocolate? I'm like, absolutely not. But let's come up with some other fun flavors that are, you know, maybe a little bit more interesting. So I started working with fun marshmallow. And uh, recently we've been doing um, house-made passion fruit marshmallows enrobed in 71% dark chocolate. And man, those are crazy, crazy good. Michael, that's not on your website, so I it's think not I'm, there currently. I might I was, need to come over. I, I was supposed to do a batch this week, but I got a little crazy. So keep an eye out; <laughs> they'll be back. Well, um, is there anything that you wish you knew before you started your business? Uh, actually, yes, especially on the kind of the business side. Uh, I started uh, without a business plan. I started without uh, much marketing experience, as I mentioned. I was in the restaurant business, so I can talk to people. I can be very enthusiastic and passionate about what I do or when I was working in restaurants about what the chef was doing. I get very excited about food and chocolate and uh, I, because it makes people happy. On the business side, um, I was fortunate in college to, you know, take some accounting classes and some stuff like that, but that was a long time ago. So starting your own small business, uh, there's that whole business side that was, was it, entirely new but it was 
there's a lot more moving parts, as I mentioned earlier, that I wish I had kind of taken the time to sit down, understand about COGS and all these other things. I always kind of had a vague idea, uh, mm -hmm. as I think a lot of small, especially artists and producers, like they're like, I just want to make chocolate. I want to do something that's beautiful and pretty. And it, here's the price that, you know, it's, it costs X number of dollars or whatever. And I think knowing a little bit more about that. So I was very fortunate a couple of years ago, we have an amazing um, organization in San Francisco called the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Center. And it's a nonprofit. And I uh, took a, a business planning class and actually wrote out a business plan and worked on all the, the major aspects of marketing and finances and management. And it really gave me a, a really great kind of uh, broad idea and more understanding of my business from all different aspects. And it, it's been yeah. great. So, and then, you know, to bring in MailChimp and Intuit and QuickBooks has, uh, I don't know if I could do it without it. I, I, I can, like, how do people run businesses before we had computers and did these things? Because I was alive when all that happened. And, you know, the journals, and I remember, and, and I've, I'm that old, but I, in college, you know, writing out in my, you know, accounting journals and ledgers and things. And so it's just so much easier. And it gives us, gives me more time to focus on what I love, knowing that the the financial part is taken care of, that my bookkeeper can come in and double check my work as it is, because I, uh, like, you know, see what I did this time. And I get some very interesting emails. She's like, I'm not exactly sure what this means, but okay. And so we chat about it. And uh, so there's education for me still every day about the business. I love it. <laughs> finances, That's awesome. And marketing and it's, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I might start to use that. See what I did this time, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, one last question before we go into a round of rapid fire. Um, sure. We've got, you know, a handful of folks from MailChimp, a handful of folks from our QuickBooks team. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the team? Uh, just yeah, why you, know, you got them here? There is a, yeah, there's a, a great story that I um, uh, love to tell. Um, and it is about, uh, into it and the whole team uh, there. Uh, during COVID, uh, when we went from our initial um, business plan uh, to COVID, we basically went entirely online. You know, we hadn't set up our business structure to be an entirely online business. So it was a struggle for, especially for a lot of small business owners. And there was a lot of, you know, can we survive this? Can we li like literally get through COVID and keep the business alive because kitchen and all the keeping you know in, you know stock and things so it was it was really hard and then someone approached me uh from Intuit and they were offering a program for their employees which was you know everyone's working remotely and I think they just wanted to make everyone happy and help support your small customers like a little tiny business like me and they gave employees a credit to spend at whatever business uh, they were able to do when I agreed to do to it. I uh, agreed to do it. I probably should have asked the question, how many I didn't, which is fine. I'm like, I don't care how many I'm going to do whatever. And uh, being a chocolatier, when you, we do maker's fairs and I have the candle person on one side and the necklace person on the other side, the line in front of the chocolate is always longer and they get mad at me. So chocolate's chocolate. And um, so we had a huge, huge uh, response and it was just amazing. The orders kept coming in. And this is in the middle of summer, which is the hardest time for chocolate, because we had to ship to Arizona and Idaho, where it was literally 120 degrees. There was a gentleman in Arizona who got to be my guinea pig. He was so nice. I kept sending him chocolate. I'm like, all I want you to do, if you could, is just take a picture of it for me when you open it and send it back to me. And I'm going to keep sending you chocolate until it arrives perfectly. So I don't know how much chocolate he ate. He said, if it comes melted, stick it in the fridge it'll harden back up again and just eat it. And yeah. so literally we would not be in business if it were not for Intuit and the employees and uh, the repeat customers that we gained from that even. It's, uh, I get like, I get chills thinking about it because it's, it's you know, I don't want it to sound like a commercial, but it's true. Like we're literally here because of Intuit and their support of small businesses and their customers and the employees who are so great and who are so patient as I was learning how to ship chocolate to 120 degree weather. And some people had to wait a little bit longer, but everyone was like, it's okay, it's coming. Yeah. We'll get your chocolate eventually. And then everyone got an extra little bonus because it took longer. So it's, it's, it's just great. I really, really appreciate what you guys do. 
Uh, I'm glad that MailChimp is part of the, the, the group now because it's bringing stuff together. Like my worlds are all like, you know, coming together, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we like to say our powers combined. Here we it's, are. It's so. great, yeah. It's, well, it's something that's invaluable to, to us, yeah, so. I love it, I love it. All right, so we got some fast questions okay. here before we get to some questions with um, the folks out in the wild out there. I, I see in the chat, there's a lot of people wanting to be your guinea pig shipper. So, <laughs> so. There tends to be a, a line I mean, for that, yeah. E easy thing to volunteer for. Yes. Um, now you already told us your peanut butter and chocolate uh, blend is your most popular. What's number two? Oh gosh. Um, so big flavors, I, I would have to say our lemon burst is uh, oh. our most classic. Uh, it, this is a, a, a bon bon, a flavor I created um, back in 2017. And it is a uh, lemon pactifui, which is a, a lemon like a fruit jelly, white chocolate mm -hmm. lemon ganache. And it actually has a dark chocolate shell. A lot of chocolatiers like to carry that white chocolate all the way through. Uh, white chocolate to me is a, a, a bit too sweet. It works really well for the ganache because lemon is so tart. So you bite into this, you get this wonderful burst of lemon. And then it's a lovely creamy white chocolate ganache. And then you get a little dark chocolate on the finish. You're like, wow, I just had the best of both worlds. I get my lovely creamy tart lemon and a little chocolate to finish. That was the first uh, national award that we won. Uh, I, uh, my husband at the time was saying, you know, we need to get our name out there. So could you start entering contests? I'm like, you have to pay in these contests. I'm like, you want me to pay someone to judge my product that I'm already judging constantly? He's like, yes, please do that. And the first contest we entered, we actually won. So it was amazing. nationwide and it was amazing. So the lemon burst will always have a special place in my heart. I've made, I can't even count how many tens of thousands of those that I've made, but they're, that's my mom's favorite up with our salted caramel. We're having a little trouble with our caramel machine right now. So don't look on the website for those. Okay. <laughs> but that bourbon caramel pecan that I mentioned uh, is great. I love the salty sweet component. I, they say you're supposed to love all, you know, all of your kids the same. All of my recipes are my children, right? Uh, and I, I should love them all the same. I don't. I, I like the salty <laughs> sweet ones. The bourbon caramel pecan. The uh, uh, we have a lovely um, amaranth cherry, which actually has an actual piece of amaranth cherry, which is a preserved cherry with the dark chocolate cherry ganache, and it's like a grown up chocolate covered cherry. It's just delicious. That's awesome. Um, so. Uh, what are the three things that you feel like have contributed to your success as a small business, as a small um, business? I feel like passion has to be one of them. Passion. I, I, you have to have passion. You absolutely do. It's, and it's, it's easy to, uh, to burn out. Uh, I was very passionate about my previous career, but after 30 years, I kind of burn out a little bit. Yeah. I was working for someone else and working for yourself is a very different feel. And, um, there's a lot more motivation there to succeed for yourself. Um, I will say, and he's not here, I wish he could. My husband is a huge part of supporting me and uh, my insecurities about starting my own business and him saying, I don't care, we're just gonna do it. You know, let's just do it. It doesn't matter, succeed or fail, you know, it doesn't matter. It's like, your product is amazing. You're incredibly talented. And I uh, get a little teary eyed when I think about the many conversations and fights that we've had about, you know, how we run the business, you know, it's, it's when you become a business partner with your significant other, it, um, but it's brought us closer together, actually, after many years of <laughs> marriage therapy, it's great. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, but it, that's, that's a huge, huge thing is having a partner that I can rely on to support me in the areas that I'm not as strong in. And it's a great, a great team that we have with that. And, you know, I just think it's also the enthusiasm and excitement of others. I can have the passion about what I do all day long. I love chocolate. I love making sweet things. Like, as I mentioned, I like making people happy. I love, you know, trying lots of different things and such. But when I see the response from people, from customers that come back to me, they're like, I just had your cognac bonbon and my eyes rolled back in my head. And I don't know how you get it so smooth and that flavor and this and that. And that's what keeps me going because I'm like, really, you like that one? Now you need to try this one because this one's going to be different. We're going to, you know, and people come in like, I love this flavor. Have you done anything with that? I'm like, huh, I've not. I have a a, a flavor that we're actually going to bring back. It's a, um, sal a salted brown butterscotch. Oh, 
and it's amazing and it's so good and someone said they like do you do butterscotch and I did a little research I'm like that's not actually a real flavor but it's butterscotch pudding is entirely artificial so I found a way to make butterscotch and it's a little bit of sea salt there's a little bourbon in there too but it's super addictive and brown butter it's toasty and rich and that's awesome good stuff all right, we're getting close to when we're gonna move into our audience Q&A. So I do okay. wanna ask you one last question yes. before I close this out. And this is one that I like, and I think that it's you know important for all of us general and, and for sure within our community. Michael, what do you love the most about yourself? Oh, golly. Uh, I love that I really try to be that guy in the room that's positive and optimistic and kind of upbeat and you know there's so many things that bring us down you know there's stuff that happens in the government or elsewhere and there's there's a lot of reason to you know especially the last few years to be kind of depressed and it's been really really hard and for me personally I try to lift people up you know make people happy like let's let's find out the positive side to things. Uh, I don't, you know, not obnoxiously so I hope, but uh, I really think it, that positivity, the way you treat people positive, you know, positively, you know, if people are having a grumpy day and they want to be rude to you and you just give them a big smile back and you're like, I don't know what your day's like, but here, have some chocolate. It makes everything better. And just being kind of the guy who's not eternally optimistic, but most of the time. I think that I think it's great and you try to have a little ray of sunshine um, without being irritating. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great, great way to go at it, Michael. Um, well, you know, I've really enjoyed just spending time together and chatting with you. Um, you're such an inspiration and uh, so just uh, proud to know that that you are one of our customers using our products and that, um, you know, we're here to help. And and I love you, man. It's awesome. Yes. I, I look like we do so, without you guys, as I, I said wish before. I can hug you yeah. right now. Can we have the, so. the yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica so we can do some live Q and A. Awesome. And again, thanks. Appreciate you. Thank you for chatting. I really, really enjoyed it. Well, hi, Michael. Hi. Uh, <laughs> you know. It, it's been great to get to know you this week. It's been great to hear you today. Um, there have been so there's so much positivity in the chat for you right now. And I think the first thing I want to get to before we get to your Q and A is someone pointed out that they want you to know how many smiles you're bringing to people's faces right now. Oh, that's that's great. That's really your great. you, your positivity, your story. It's just amazing. And, you know, you've kind of answered a couple of the questions as we went through, you know, your your actual favorite chocolate, because some people want to know what to put on their carts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get those salty and sweet options, y'all. Yes. Um, there's a really good question here. With your experience, um, you've learned so much. You clearly have so much to teach. Have you considered teaching other small business owners? You know, it's it's interesting. I, I haven't as far as that. I've, uh, as a sommelier in my previous career, I used to teach a lot of classes about wine and how to taste wine and do that. I've done chocolate classes, but I've never thought of doing a, a business class. Um, it's interesting now that you mentioned that because I, I feel like I've actually gained quite a bit of knowledge that um, uh, I didn't have. I, I, I actually have a, a network of uh, other small entrepreneurs happen to be chocolatiers who started after me. And we do a lot of connection. I get a lot of questions and it's a mentorship of, of sorts. We've never actually you know, defined it as such, but a lot of questions like, how do you do this? Where do you source that? How do you deal with these margins and this thing? So it's a lot of also like, how, can, how do you make your caramel so good? I don't get it. So there's, <laughs> there's a lot of recipe stuff, but there's also um, a lot of that business stuff that goes back and forth of, you know, how could, you know, what do you do for this? And, and what, how is your pricing structure for that? And um, uh, maybe it's something I should keep in mind. You know, you, you just brought up a great point and there are actually a couple of questions around that, around some of the more technical uh, aspects of your business. You know, uh, do you have gift wrapping as an option, uh, dairy free options? And then we have one person who really knows their chocolate and they're like, how do you get those 
ludicrous parts. What kind of technique are you using to, you know, get into all those crevices and get those perfect shapes that you're getting? Well, we have a lot of different techniques. We have uh, working with chocolate. There uh, is a very, very difficult process uh, that you'll see um, a lot of chocolatiers at one time were uh, pastry chefs, but a lot of pastry chefs don't want to go anywhere near chocolate because you're dealing with tempering. And that's a term that I'm sure some people have heard, which how you put the chocolate in a proper crystalline structure so you get that lovely snap and that beautiful shine. If you look at the, uh, our website, uh, you can see uh, I work a lot with that um, hand-painted color cocoa butter designs, which get a beautiful shine. And that is all the magic of chocolate. It, uh, chocolate is magic. It absolutely is. Um, when they say, you know, it's the gift from the gods, whoever they are did an amazing job because it is literally what it does and how it transforms is like miraculous. So um, working with a lot of different techniques, I use different molds. Uh, the hearts are these beautiful hand-painted molds, which is uh, polycarbonate. The, the process I use, I polish it. Uh, I spray it with tempered colored cocoa butter. I use amazing chocolate to make a shell. I then fill them with one, two, three, however many layers I'm putting in it. Uh, and then that crystallizes. Uh, and then we cap it and pop it out. And hopefully it's beautiful and shiny uh, if I've done my job. And a nice thin shell. Um, I was taught by all the masters that I've worked with that the, the shell is simply the vehicle to the filling. And so although the shell, the chocolate aspect is very important to it, the filling is really where the artistry comes in. So I kind of use that, that mentality. Um, and it's great. It's, um, and we do enrobed pieces as well, where we can do just a, a ganache or we do different layers of, we have a, a hazelnut espresso. So it's a house-made hazelnut praline. I take amazing hazelnuts from Oregon, use a long, slow French roasting technique, grind them, a little bit of sea salt, mix that with chocolate, create a praline, and then an espresso ganache. And if you've ever had an espresso latte or a hazelnut espresso latte, it's crazy. Uh, well, I know what I'm adding to my cart now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a, a really good question, and I think you've kind of touched on it, but what is it that QuickBooks and MailChimp can do to better support you through times of rapid growth? Well, I, I know that there are uh, options, there's financing options and help with with the cash flow issue, and right now that's kind of been it, because it, it's sink or swim, you know, like, now as I'm kind of trans transitioning to being much busier and dealing with more SKUs and, and different things is um, help with inventory and I know that there are um, uh, things of that nature and, and I think on the MailChimp side um, with my husband working with that understanding um, what the possibilities are I think you know a little bit more education about what the products can do for us um, and in kind of a simple mode I with as busy as I am, I don't necessarily have the time to sit down and go, what can Intuit do for me? And sit and read through QuickBooks because, and I, I discover things all the time. My bookkeeper is like, well, you know, you could do so-and-so. I'm like, that's a really helpful hint. Thank you very much. And I think uh, MailChimp specifically, I think we're only using just a little bit of what that can, that product can help us with. And so um, I'm going to take, um, uh, Erica up on her offer and get a little bit more information about that and uh, get my husband in on that and myself as well and utilize the products to their fullest ability. It's, there's so much that they can do. And I think, I don't want to say a dumbed down approach, but, you know, some of us are a little bit older. We didn't grow up in the tech era. So, you know, it's, it's, I mean, that's the reality of, of where we are right now. There's, we've learned so much in my lifetime, I remember in high school, you know, we were do, it wasn't even called coding, it was programming and it wasn't mm -hmm. anything. And, you know, so now the, the wonders of things that we can do, it's, it's great. And um, knowing your products and what they can do for us would be really, really great. Well, you know, I'm going to volunteer some of our QuickBooks folks, because there's an ask for you to come up to our uh, San Francisco or Mountain View site to do a chocolate and wine tasting event. You know, I'm sure we can get some QuickBooks folks there to help, uh, like Erica's folks over at MailChimp will, to uh, see what we can do for you. That would be awesome. That would be really great. So, yes, I am putting our QuickBooks folks on the spot. Deal with it. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you did touch on this a little bit, and I think one of the other things that I wanted to kind of ask you is, uh, with all of your experiences in Samiria, um, really, how has that changed your approach to chocolate making, and how has that experience in that that sense of smell and that sense of taste that it takes to become a certified sommelier, <laughs> um, how does that really change and make, set you apart from your competition? Yeah, it is, um, I think, definitely a thing. And I, I didn't even think about it when we started. You know, people always ask when you're starting a small business uh, that does something that other people do, what makes you different? Why are you special? Like, what's, what's going on? And I didn't really think, sorry, Ash, Ash has opinions about that in the room. Um, for me, it's, I, I trained myself to taste things. As a sommelier, you learn to taste. You're not just drinking wine all day. It's fun as that sounds, uh, when you see these sommeliers taking wine and spitting it out, because there's a huge difference between tasting and drinking and learning to identify flavors and textures and balance. Uh, also working with Michelin starred chefs who create food the same way has really informed how I create flavors now and create bonbons. And I go for flavors and texture and mouthfeel and things where you, when you're, I don't want to call it the thinking person's chocolate because it's absolutely not, but it's delicious. But for instance, I have a, a, a bonbon called um, um, uh, Old Petrao Rye Whiskey, and it's just a plain ganache. It's very simple, but I use a local uh, four year, four and a half year aged rye whiskey. Uh, again, more spirits, but you know, I'm crazy that way. Not everything I make has spirits, by the way. But uh, and when I describe it to people, I said, first, you're going to taste a little vanilla and then a little smokiness from the barrel char. And then you're gonna get a little kind of prickly spice on your tongue from the rye, which is re like reminiscent of clove and cinnamon. And then you, it'll just kind of be riding on top of that chocolate flavor. And people's eyes light up. They're like, that's exactly how I'm tasting this. And that's just the, physio the, the physiology of taste. And so understanding that uh, it's fun to teach, but it's also fun you know, when I'm creating flavors. Like, how is this gonna hit you? What, what are you gonna taste first? I want it to be an adventure and you know something exciting rather than you know just popping that Snickers into your mouth. And you know, it's it's and I always joke, um, my mom loves to say, I you know, my friends love your candy. I always say, Mom, a Snicker bar is candy. I make confections, very different. My uh when I make a bonbon, they take about three days to produce. I don't think people realize the amount of uh, actual physical labor it takes. What the process I told you about polishing the mold. The making the show the three process. So a little piece that's this big, you know, I obviously make large batches. Um, it takes a while and it takes a lot of patience and love to do it. So 